add Brian here and okay got that all right let me do real quick audio check with pros pros is actually right down the road from me he lives in lexington one time we had a we had a, a, a problem one time with go to webinar and pros actually came over here to to my house and did the webinar here which is always nice to see price and every now and then we'll go down to uh, downtown lexington to local taco and have lunch <laughs> together so price is a really good guy and he's he saved my he saved my bacon once or once or twice, so he's a really nice guy. You guys are really going to enjoy him. I can hear him laughing in the background, so I know he's my That's right, Hubert. You keep me laughing. So I'm going to turn it over to Price. Price is mainly the, the 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 big trends guy. He's the options guy and the big trends guy, so he's going to teach you some really, really good stuff. Price, it's all yours. Thanks, Hubert. Uh, do I get a screen share? Uh, and I, I appreciate that kind of introduction. I always enjoy seeing you. Let's do lunch real soon. There you go, man. I've made you an organizer. You can do anything presenter. you do. Let, let me change myself over to presenter, and I think that'll work. Okay, so let's share this, and let me know if you can see this okay. We're going to talk. Uh, yes, I can see it. You're, you're my top one. three favorite technical analysis techniques. Uh, glad to have everybody with us. Uh, got a great crowd. Uh, and Hubert, thanks so much for hosting. You and Jeanette do a great job putting these together. It's just a lot of fun to hear what everybody's doing in the markets. So I'm going to share uh, my perspective. You know, because my my job, and I think all of our jobs as traders, is to take advantage of what the market presents us. And whatever type of trading you do whether it's stocks, options, futures, forex, uh, you name it. Uh, you know, I think there's just a, a ton of opportunity out there with the volatility that we've had. And so you want to be able to take advantage of it. We're focusing on the first E of education here today. We'll talk a little bit about exploration and how, we, how I'd run scans for things. And then uh, the execution piece comes from, you know, specific training we do through workshops and real-time trade alerts and all that good stuff. Of course, everything we're sharing with you today is for your information and education only. Uh, nothing here should be considered a specific buy or sell recommendation in particular because I'm always concerned if I make a recommendation and then you're not around to find out when I got out of it, whether it was at a stop or at a profit target, you know, that would concern me. So just really soak this in as education. Ultimately, you know that you are solely responsible for your investment decisions. Big trends and staff aren't responsible for any trades you choose to make. And not all big trends products or services are appropriate for all investors. And we don't provide any personalized financial or tax or legal advice. It's all sent out to everybody at the same time in real time alerts uh, for different uh, subscriber groups. So do consult with your tax and investment advisor before you make any investment that might impact your unique tax situation. All right, so with that behind us, like I said, we want to get you pointed towards the target first. If you're pointed off in the wrong direction, then you've got no chance of hitting the target. Um, and so the idea is that we've got to get you pointed towards the target, and then we can start to zero in to where ultimately we can start to really say, okay, how are we going to then really laser focus by the end of the process to hit the bullseye? Uh, my goal is to share with you some of the things that have worked well for me in all types of markets. And, and frankly, I've been trading for 25 years, but you know, I started Big Trends back in 99, based on these techniques, and really the one that got me there fastest uh, was acceleration bands. You know, it's all about speed of movement. When you talk about what type of, uh, uh, you know, what type of uh, <coughs> trader you are, let me just say, I am seeing the questions box, it looks like. I want to get a sense of what type of traders do we have. Are you a day trader in and out the same day? Are you, are you more of a swing trader uh, out in, in the few days to no more than a week range? Are you more position trading in the multiple weeks range? Uh, so just give me a sense because when I go through and share some of these concepts with you, I want to tie it to some of the time frames. We've got quite a few swing traders with us um, and uh, so, and so some day traders and some position traders, but it looks like swing is the predominant time frame. So we're going to, that will cause me to focus my, my bands and some of these things I'm going to share with you across uh, the hourly charts because I find that the hourly charts are really good for about the next week in my big trends methodology. Um, it's all about speed of movement. So, and thanks for sharing that. I uh, love love seeing the great participation there. Uh, when we're talking about, you know, especially when we get into options trades, we want to get things that are really moving fast, that are speeding up. Uh, you know, at, at preferably some kind of a parabolic rate. You know, a lot of people when I when I started to uh, share this idea said, you know, you're just promoting bubble type of trades, and I'm like, yeah, I love being on bubbles when you're just starting to get in and catch the inflation of a 
big accelerating move. You know, what I found when I started trading, I, you know, I, I graduated from Duke University, which as Hubert knows here in Kentucky is sort of a sacrilegious thing, but uh, I was very blessed to have that opportunity and came in thinking, okay, I'm, I'm a smart enough guy, I can figure this out. You know, we're all smart analysts, right? We all know that every idea we come up with should be a good idea. We all know also when you get into real world trading that everyone is not. You've got to figure out how do you weed out the, the noise and get to what's really working. So that's what, what I'm here to share with you because when I started trading in 1990, I would wait for, for my Saturday morning FedEx delivery uh, of the uh, of the Daily Graphs chart book and I would go through hundreds and hundreds of charts by hand and I would start marking down opportunities and I would have a laundry list that was often multiple pages long and what do you think I did with that information? Um, if you have too many ideas coming at you, what do you tend to do? Just uh, yeah, quick, quick thought for you. You ever feel information overloaded in today's markets? What does that cause you to do? It causes you to freeze and ultimately do what? Nothing, right? We don't want to get in a situation where we're so jammed up with information that we don't do anything. We've got you, you've got a load of uh, great speakers today, and what I always say is, from all the notes that you take, from all of the things that that you hear, you're going to hear a lot of great content and a lot of great trading ideas. You still have to get back and focus on one core thing at a time. Okay, so you know you can take advantage of multiple offers, but you kind of have to get down to let me implement one thing, then I can implement something else. You know, it's kind of like the Ben Franklin uh, habits. You know, he did one habit a month for 12 months and worked on you know basically building a habit at a time. Okay, so so basically what I found with moving averages is it gives me way too many different crossovers and breakouts and breakdowns. I don't like I don't like to use moving averages for my initial how do I come up with the best of the best ideas. What I found in the 90s and since is that the best stocks don't tend to give you that come back down to test that major average until it's too late. You know, by the time it's coming back down, you don't want to be uh, positioning yourself for you know buying something too late after the moves already happened. I looked at a lot of adaptive bands, John Bollinger's Bollinger bands I think are a great concept and they're based around volatility, right? But what I notice is that when something really starts to trend, when it really starts to have a big move, that's the big trends uh, brand name, uh, you know, I, I found that I was in and out too fast and missing a lot of that move just trading traditional bands. So I developed this thing called acceleration bands that takes account into account both volatility and the trend component. So we're going to look at some of those examples. But the idea here is that most of the time a stock should trade in between these bands. Whether you look at Bollinger's, whether you look at accelerations, a two deviation band is about 95% of the action should be happening inside that band. So most people are trading the inside the band mentality thinking, well, I'll buy the low of the band, I'll sell the high of the band. And that's too, um, A, it's expected. And so in the options market, that's already priced in. You know, so what you have to find if you're trading options, especially buying options, looking for a bigger move, is the other five to we find up to 15% of the time for a given stock. That sounds like a low probability thing. We're not talking about a win percentage. We're talking about the actual rare move. So, you know, it, it hit me when I was reading the book Soros on Soros. I read a lot of books, and I encourage you to do the same. Just like you're here educating yourself, it's about continuing education, not just for, you know, for the early stages of your life, but throughout your life, I, you never stop learning. I'm glad you're here to really embody that concept. But Soros said uh, these unexpected moves, you know, we made a billion dollars shorting the British pound, are known as the fat tails of the distribution. This is where they're supposed to not be happening, but about 2.5% on each side. Our studies show they happen about three times as, as frequently. These 100-year floods are actually happening about every 33 years, if you thought of it that way. Uh, they're, they're happening more often. You know, just like you saw the 2000 crash, you saw the 2008 collapse. You know, the, that's happening a lot more frequently than it, than it should. And the boom's back up. You know, we've been in this uh, six and a half, almost seven-year bull run. Uh, you know, we've got opportunities on both sides here. And that's what Soros was pointing out. Now, you know, the stock that, or a few of these stocks, uh, the big tech world helped launch big trends. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on older charts, but just to give you a little history on big trends. You know, I was teaching people about this concept, and this was a stock, Huber probably remembers it, CMGI. It was an internet fund of funds kind of a play. They owned a lot of private 
internet companies that they were planning to take public. And that made a lot of sense while the tech market was strong. And as the tech market kept going ballistic in the late 90s, remember Y2K, right before the new millennium hit, everybody was getting worried about that. Well, CMGI was benefiting because a lot of the tech stocks were still running up. Now, just a basic rule here, we've got the classic uh, these are 20-day acceleration bands. You can get them on a lot of platforms, um, you know, but you know you still need to learn the rules about how to use them properly. But basically, we've encouraged a lot of the big brokers to get it on their platforms, and uh, and so. But what we're looking at here is when something's in a dead zone, I don't mess with it. You know, especially if you're an option trader, all this chop, you know, that's that's not for me. Um, and I don't think if you're if you're buying options, it's not for you. If you're selling options, you might be able to benefit from it. The problem with that is that once it breaks out of those bands, you got a problem if you're an option seller. So I, I leave these kind of high momentum stocks as potential uh, call or put buying opportunities usually. But one and then two straight closes outside of that band tells me to buy at that close or we coded it to buy the next bars open here. And this is done in uh, actually this chart. Uh, it says Crave is supercharged. It's the predecessor to TradeStation. I've been using TradeStation's technology since the early 90s. Uh, so most of my trading career because of the power to code ideas. Now there's a lot of other platforms that give you that too. So you can do this on a lot of different platforms. But the concept is when something unusual is happening, you want to be able to take advantage of it and capture that window of time as this thing you can see then trends, trends, trends until it actually breaks back in the original rules, I was saying, you know, once it once it broke just barely back into that uh, into that band on a close, we would go ahead and hop out because in, in the in the 90s and early 2000s, that those moves were very um, you know defined without any, even a bar of noise. These days, we actually use a trailing uh, stop that's a little bit different, and you learn that in the ongoing training that I'll show you here. But bottom line is that. You know, we caught that move, and that really helped put big trends on the map. Um, in, in a similar way, when the market started to roll over September 2000, I was in Barron's and I said, watch out below, because we were seeing breakdowns of a similar magnitude. Same thing happened in 08. You know, here's an example of Bear Stearns, uh, where basically, you know, I always thought it was funny that any investment firm would be named Bear Anything and expect to be around for the long haul. Uh, ultimately, their name kind of caught up to them. But, uh, for different reasons, but you know, this shows we're going to talk also about the percent R indicator. Larry Williams developed it. Uh, we have these tools across multiple broker platforms as part of our combined Big Trends toolkit too. But bottom line is, you know, what we're looking at here is the window that I would look at where I start to merge these concepts would be where that first breakdown happens, and that one wouldn't have been that profitable. You can see you were profitable for a few days. Per our trailing rules, we would probably book part of our profit there and then get trailed on the stop out at around break even on the rest in this case. So you'd make a little bit of money on that trade. But when percent R signals but the acceleration bands don't, we don't take that trade until you get one and then two closes back underneath. So the right in here, this thing was signaling on Bear Stearns in March of 2008. You know, this is before the Lehman bankruptcy uh, in September of 08. And Fannie Mae, we had we had AIG, we had a lot of these uh, financials that were collapsing. And some of the best profits I've ever made on the downside were when then stocks like J and J, Johnson and Johnson, and Procter and Gamble collapsed because their option premiums were not as expensive. You know, just a little side story. A buddy of mine called me as Bear Stearns dropping. It already dropped from 69 down to 30 bucks here on that Friday, the 14th. I remember well. He called me right before the market closed. He said, "I've got a great trade for you. Why don't you buy Bear Stearns here and and uh, you can sell the one week 30 strike calls at the money for six bucks." He said, "You can make 20 percent in a week if the stock stays flat or goes up. That's like a thousand percent annualized." He said. I said, "Don't do it." He said, "What? It's a great trade." And I said, "Don't do it." The bell rang. He had already done the trade. I said, why Why are you calling me then if you've already done the trade? Never try to catch a falling knife. You can see that when that then that weekend, uh, J.P. Morgan announced they were putting an offer in for $2 a share. The stock opened here at 3 dollars half. My buddy was down almost 90% on the stock. Uh, and uh, and basically, you know, uh, of course, called me then, panicked, and said, what does he do? And I said, well, at three and a half, there's the market saying that that's a, a low offer. It's probably going to be a higher offer. You should probably hold it. Turned out he sold it in a panic. You know, so again, I said, why do you call me? But bottom line is, you know, this is the kind of thing where everybody thinks they know 
some way to, you know, say, gee, that, that looks like a low risk trade to make 20% of $6 a cushion at 30, your break even would be 24 if you're a cover call trader. Bottom line is that was a horrific idea because the thing was in a free fall, you know, so we love free falls to trade in the direction of that. And then of course, when you get gaps like that, you want to go ahead and say, thank you very much. Book at least half your profit there. This one ended up getting taken out about $10 when JP Morgan had to up their offer. And we're going to show you some updated examples here too but you know by, as i said i've been critiqued as being a bubble boy if you will trading the bubbly stocks that are really running a lot but you know what who who really is talking about a bubble negatively it's those who missed out you know what i find is that you you want to be a you want to take an opportunity to really find these situations bill asks is there a moving average envelope there is uh, that's another band we looked at those two but we found the acceleration bands work better for what we were looking to to spot which is the true big breakdowns, you know, the or breakouts. And so it, it doesn't just tell you when it's starting to inflate and you're starting to get on the upside. It also tells you when that bubble is starting to burst. So the big thing that I've found is that a lot of traders tend to fall in love with their stocks. They tend to fall in love with their positions. You know, if something's made you a lot of money, you know, you start to think, oh, well, you know, Apple's made me a lot of money, so I'll, I'll just ride it out. And even though the stock's been getting kind of beat up in the last few months. Uh, we'll see how the success launch goes over the weekend. But bottom line is that, you know, and, and we haven't been trading it lately, so it's been choppy. But bottom line is that stocks that bubble up will also bubble or bust down, you know. And so you really, your lesson here is that you want to be flexible and trade them both ways. When the, when the big trend changes, you've got to change with it. And so, you know, some of the big key lessons, and we'll look at some of these examples here, they're driven by growth stocks. Typically, I mean, we can trade a lot of other things. We show you an example. We just traded the last couple of days on deer. So, you know, it's if, on the downside. If, if, if you see opportunities elsewhere, you want to take them too. But usually the big bubbles on the upside are growing at very fast rates. So earnings are very important. You want to see earnings growth of usually the, the high double digits, sometimes even triple digits. Um, but, you know, something that's really growing fast because those are the ones that will bubble up. They'll also be the ones that eventually bust down. It doesn't hurt when there's some kind of media debate about it. You know, so I, I was just came back from New York late last night. It was on a CNBC Thursday and, and uh, Fox Business Friday. Uh, and basically you're looking for, you know, names that people don't agree with you on. So we, we were talking about Under Armour as a name that we've liked and basically uh, among other names, uh, you know, everybody thinks it's overvalued. It's been an amazing stock. We'll look at that one in a minute too and we've had success uh, trading those options um, so you know usually overvalued can just get more overvalued undervalued or cheap can just get cheaper uh, if you're not careful especially as a trader you got to be careful about uh, reacting to that type of a justification or rationalization for the leaders usually there's a breakout to a new high so usually the the best movers more than 80 percent of the time the leaders will break out um, within 15 percent of their highs to on, on the start of their next move. So they don't give back much when they're in that kind of retracement mode. So um, let's actually look at, before we look at deer, it's one, the one we traded last week. I mentioned Apple, and I think it's one that everybody loves to kind of see what's going on. You know, if you look at Apple right now, just on the daily chart, and it's been a really good one on our percent R and big trends uh, acceleration band system. So you can see the combination here. I've got a longer term band in here. I'm, uh, it's a longer term Bollinger band. I'm just going to take off so you can see the first starter is just the acceleration bands in purple here on the upper chart. So you can literally go in and look at these moves and you can see like when Apple broke out earlier this year, now this shows both the percent R and the accelerations break out here. So percent R, uh, just to give you a quick little primer on that too. Larry Williams developed that one. That's kind of the second uh, tool in the arsenal here. Uh, and, and Larry Williams said, you know what, when something goes overbought, you know, this, this, this is a quicker way to find those overbought and oversold situations. What I found in my testing is that when it actually goes overbought and then it keeps going up, that's actually a sign that you want to actually buy it because the institutions are likely wanting to pile on board. You can see looking at the acceleration move, it really kicked off. We were getting one close above there, but not really two closes above. There was just a hair of a second close above there right there. So that, that was uh, um, 
you know, it's within a penny of it actually. And so officially, actually, the with the one and two day acceleration actually happened right here. You say, well, gee, that's a little late. Well, guess what? For option traders, if you're a swing trader, that helped you catch a move from 124 to 133 over the next six trading days. You know, so and we're going to move it down into the intraday charts here in a minute too. But you can see more recently, you know, what's what's been going on with Apple? Just the opposite, right? Uh, you can see since the early August, one and then two closes below. And, and what I want to point out to you is something that we call the retest here, because you can see there's a there's the acceleration bands in purple. We've got a typical trailing moving average there in yellow. But what I found was I was getting whipped. There was an example where it closed above that trailing moving average there in yellow, but the percent R when it breaks down. One second, uh, when it breaks down, you can see here that that little retracement right there where it comes out of the oversold area is actually what we call a bearish retest. It means that there's a lot of traders probably getting flushed right there on that bar. A lot of a lot of the bears who are expecting the breakdown are getting flushed when it then reverses or they've got their trailing stops in and they're getting washed out. Uh, that flush concept is one that I think has now helped our big trend subscribers really uh, kind of put themselves ahead of the crowd and realize when everybody else is getting flushed there's probably some great opportunities there. And sometimes it's going to keep going the other way. So you're going to have times where you take a stop, but your your loss is going to be much smaller and your size of your average win is going to be much greater. And so while you might not have like necessarily the highest win percentage of any system that we've ever tested, you can have some of your best profits because when you're wrong, you're not wrong for long. It's, it's the old trading motto of keep cut your losses short and let your winners run, right? Everybody wants to do that. And you can see on the daily chart, it's a little bit noisy because of just the kind of volatility we've had here. And, but bottom line is that was an example where even for a quick trade back down, you could, you could pop it back down. And right now, Apple's bounced a little bit. It's tried to break out. Our percent R would have been saying that it got to break above that 116 and a half area. You saw that it traded to 116.69 intraday on Friday. But this is another key premise, which is that when something breaks out, you know, if it doesn't close above that level, 116.54, it trades 15 cents above there. How many times have you thought, ooh, I want to get on before everybody else, and I'm going to try to basically jump in and, and anticipate that it's going to keep going intraday? Well, of course, you know the market gapped up Friday on the heels of Yellen's uh, comments about uh, thinking that the economy is a little stronger a week later, right, basically massaging her prior remarks, which were interpreted as the economy being weak the prior Thursday. Uh, you know, bottom line is that markets kind of woke up. I was, I was saying on, on, the, on the news yesterday morning, I was saying, you know, you know Yellen's basically managing people's uh, expectations and trying to manipulate, if you, uh, manipulate wasn't the word I use, that'd be a little strong, but I said basically she's trying to massage the perceptions of what she said the prior Thursday and, and make people not think that the economy is as weak, therefore a rate hike would be justified. I don't think the Fed's going to hike rates. I think that they're going to continue to find reasons not to touch rates and to keep them low. But ultimately what I think and what the market does are two different things that or could be. So we want to stay flexible and say, you know what, we weren't chasing that. We were seeing a lot of stocks that were, that were basically rallying early and then you see the fade late. You know, if you looked at the SPY, the S&P 500, and you said, okay, well, give me give me a flavor for the overall market here. And what we would say, as you can see, we've been in basically this big downtrend, you know, and so it was giving the sell at the close there. Our, our system was tested based on the next open, which you know on Monday morning the 23rd was a huge gap down. So it was picking up into that prior Friday. We are saying, watch out, folks, this is danger time. But then you saw after that gap down, it did retrace back into some of the trailing moving averages. But right now we're back into more of this pattern of what I would say is, is more of a trading range pattern. Looks like some support around 190, 191. Resistance up just around 200, give or take, and coming down here uh, on the acceleration bands. We're below the longer term 200 day average. So a lot of these things are mildly negative in the short term. But you know what? I can also go in and I can say, but put it in perspective. Let me actually just show you if we took a super long term chart and just said, you know what, it, it always pays to start with your longer term perspective here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually say, let's just look at the, if you looked at the acceleration bands and the, the percent R, well now look, what I just told you, that's a retest. That's the first retest we've had since May of 2012. 
okay this market broke out and you can see it's been on a steady run this is this market right now is very similar I think to the August September October period in 2011 that was based on US uh, debt downgrades and and uh, and basically people panicking about that and that was the retest that we were talking about September 2011 it tried to undercut it briefly in early October and then it shot up like a rocket that one month was the best month in the uh, market since uh, January 1987 almost 25 years so the bottom line is you know when you catch these retests that one wasn't bad either we traded below it during the month and then we flipped back above so we've been saying look whether you use the spy whether you use the Dow you know whatever you like to use let's look at the Dow for just a second give you some market uh, broad market things we'll get back into some of these other individual stocks but you know basically here too you know saw the Dow panic it was down more than a thousand points there on August 23rd. That low was 15,370. It looks like, oh, gee, everything's breaking on the on the short term uh, trend line. But you know that happened back here too. You got that little break of the trend line in in the September 2011 period. You had a little break of it in May of 2012. You were actually below it October of last year. And remember, this is classic seasonality too. So the idea here is that these acceleration bands do do offer some resistance on the overall index on the monthly chart. But interestingly enough, when you go in and you look at the history, if we take this back 90 years worth of data and we look at the strategy performance for both longs and shorts, now you can't buy 100 shares of the Dow uh, Industrials, but the, this is the only one in trade station I can go back into the 1920s with. What's impressive about that, again, this is just for kind of uh, representative purposes, but what's impressive to me is not just that it made money in the longs, you know it's been a bull market over the last 90 years. What's impressive to me is it also made money on the shorts. It didn't have many of them, three out of four, but bottom line is that what you, when you put it in perspective, and one of those that's missing actually because we don't have enough data would be the, the, the Great Depression move. If you put that into effect, you can see the breakdown in percent R happening even before the breakdown in the acceleration bands. That's the early to mid 30s there. It wasn't that the crash of 29, in my opinion, is what caused the, the Great Depression because we had the same thing with the crash of 87 and the market rebounded and never broke that low. But once this market started to break those lows, that was at 212 on the Dow, hard to believe when you put it in perspective. There you go, breaking there. Uh, fall of 1930, a year later at uh, 205. Now, and with the percent R confirming, we had a, about a, a two-year decline, year and a half decline there. So, so basically, um, and the Dow hit, of course, a low at 40.56. So, I know you care more about swing trading, but I think it's important to put that long-term trend in perspective. That, and we we are still in a longer-term bullish camp based on that. I want to talk swing trading with you, and I want to get into talking about more recent examples here. Uh, so let's just look at, when you look at the S&P, it's been very choppy. This is one reason why we didn't chase that gap on uh, yesterday morning, because we gapped up, and then you see we didn't follow through. We were going over bot on the percent R. Why didn't it give us a buy signal? Because we were not following through above that 194.83 in the proper allotted time period. So that kept us out of trouble and and uh, really helped us to say, you know what, um, you know, we stay away from that and the market sells off late. Now you see it going oversold late and it didn't follow through there either. So that's classic kind of trading range stuff and you can see that you know, we had a couple little choppy earlier periods, but this is why it's important to line up all the time frames. So let me show you a trade that we did do here in the last couple of days. This was on Deer, uh, the big ag equipment stock. You know, Caterpillar we also thought was bearish. Caterpillar of course had bad news there on Thursday morning. It caused a lot of these stocks to gap down. Uh, and Caterpillar announced they're laying off a bunch of people and you know basically weak overseas uh, economies are hurting cat. But look at Deer. Deer, just looking at the percent R, when the percent R is going oversold, let me take this chart back a notch, you can see all the time frames together. Um, and then we'll see the 15 minute over here as well. You know, look at what Deer was doing here across all your time frames. We like the 15 minute chart for your quick trades over one or two days. So we were picking up on the breakdown of the 15. The hourly, which is for you swing traders, had already broken and had just gone through a classic little retracement we call a retest on the percent R right there. What that means is it's crunch time on the indicator uh, based on if that high, 7905, gets violated on a future hourly close, you would get out of your swing trade. 
We'll teach you more about that in the in the follow-on training I'll tell you about. You can get for a record low price. But also, by the way, look at the daily chart. It was also showing the breakdown. And yes, the bands weren't broken in some of these, so we were looking at this as more of an opportunity to probably trade it down. We were expecting to probably this lower band here, which was about uh, 77 bucks. You know, we bought the weekly 80 strike puts um, at uh, about two dollars and thirty to two dollars and thirty-five cents. And what was interesting is when Caterpillar announced that news, Deer went from a close of part at 77.66 and it opened at 75 and a third. One of the things I've learned about windfall profits is you take half of your position off into a windfall gap in your favor because the, the idea is you want to give it a chance to run, but if it doesn't, then you've got to have a way out of the rest of your position. But if it does keep running, you're happy because you still have part of your position on. So a big part of this is, um, you know, okay, you see it gap down. It did continue to trend down. We tried, we after booking the first part of 103% profit, we tried to get out of the rest of 150, and it just missed our, our it would have needed to trade to 75 and a quarter. It hit se uh, 74 and a quarter. It hit 74.30. We just missed by five cents, and then you can see the next retest happen here. So now we tighten our stop if it trades over 75.29. Most of the day, it doesn't do that, and then late in the session, you can see it moves through there at 75.35. You're selling the rest at that point. Intrinsically, you're in the neighborhood of about, uh, you know, still worth about four dollars and sixty cents on the rest of your position it opened actually at 75.37 so it's about back where it was off of the open so the idea is you know you can't predict whether that thing's going to keep trending down or not you know you put it in perspective with caterpillar just we didn't trade cat but just that was the one that was driving that news in the ag stocks and you can see look at cat um, we, we didn't trade it because we weren't getting a retest. That was my concern, is, and we weren't on that daily sell like Deer was until it actually gapped down. So we had all three of the time frames confirmed for Deer. Cat was just a little bit behind on the daily. But yes, look at that hourly. Um, do you think, let me ask you a quick question, get you engaged here. Do you think that anybody had any wind that maybe Caterpillar was going to have bad news due out as a surprising news item before the close on September 23rd, the next morning, on the 24th where it gapped down. Is it possible that maybe somebody might have known something? Do you think? I think it's pretty obvious that the money flow, you could say, well, the markets have been choppy, but you know what? Basically, when you see a stock that's persistently happening uh, to sell off and not having any bounces or the old proverbial dead cat bounce where it comes in for that retest and fails, comes in for another retest, fails. You know, so, so back to the deer retest, let me show you that one and how we put that trade on because I think it's pretty fascinating when you see these patterns developing here. And we put the deer trade on. We were not early on this trade. You know, you could say, well, I should have been on way back here. Yeah, I could make that case. I probably should have. You know, we had other positions on, and that happens. How many times have you seen a move that's in progress, and you think, oh, I'm a dummy. I've missed it. You know, it's, it was at 79 uh, and a quarter on the hourly sell, and now, Price, you're telling me to get in here closer to about, about 78 bucks. Um, where we're getting that retest right there in the 15-minute chart. I love, by the way, putting the chart where you basically can't see what happens going forward. That high was 78.08. You can see we were we were trying to break it for a couple of bars. We even closed at 78.08 and at 78.07. The markets were testing. You were literally having to grit your teeth through that little retest for about three or four bars, three or four candles there. But you see what happened from that low risk entry, 7808 was my stop on the 15 minute chart. We were in a weekly option where we we're only going to be in and out by uh, Friday. So literally putting it on on a Wednesday, out on a Friday. This is for more of you shorter, short term, not necessarily day trades, but quick trade type of traders because we were not selling it at the end of the day. We were slightly profitable, but we were definitely cashing out the next day. So the idea here is that, you know, yes, you can see all kinds of candle patterns, long upper shadows, says Mark, um, but the, the premise here is how do we use this, in con and, and, uh, and one of you is asking about CCI, I'm going to get into that next, Tim, but basically, you know, the idea is, okay, how do we find these trades, we'll scan for them, and we'll show these kind of setups. So I've kind of jumped deep into the charts there, let me go back just from the PowerPoint example, this one shows you, let me reshare that, make sure you're seeing it okay, this one shows you um, the difference between Bollinger Bands and acceleration bands. These are the classic uh, over here, the 20-day uh, 
Bollinger's in the red line here. Okay, so that's your 20, two, with two deviations, 20 Bollinger band, okay, in red. And you can see on a big move like Google, 20 BB Bollinger's, the green lines, of course, are the 20 acceleration band, 20 AB, okay? And Bollinger's have their place, especially in trading range markets. They can be really useful. I think in trending markets is where you need to have another tool to really show you. But I'll actually use them in conjunction. Why? Because remember what I said before, if you get one and two bars outside of those acceleration bands, you, you'll notice another pattern developing here. The Bollinger's in that thin red line should be racing to catch up faster than the acceleration bands. And if you notice, there's this sort of a, of a period here where you've got the band, the two bands sort of staying in this little uh, sort of convergence until the stock actually craters back down in there would have hit our trailing stop and told you to exit that bar's close. You've obviously probably taken partial profits along the way, maybe on a retest added your position back. That's the period you want to be in for the trend trade, uh, not uh, the, the chop phase. People will look back on this chart and say, oh, but you could have bought the lower acceleration man you could have sold up near the high acceleration band and made some good money too. The problem with that is you might have to wait a lot longer and that will hurt you in an option sense. So look for those Bollinger acceleration combinations as a great time to catch that window and then when the window has closed, you don't mess with it. You're done and moving on. So as I said with percent R, I kind of jumped into it. Larry Williams developed it. It's like a CCI or an RSI or a stochastic in the concept of the words overbought and oversold. I just think that it's badly misused when something goes overbought. People think it's a sell, and my experience is great trends stay overbought. Um, if it's not a great trend, it'll come out overbought, it'll tell you to stop it out, and then it might be a sell. But the, the idea is that when it's in that strong overbought move, do not fade a strongly overbought stock until you see that it's truly out of that mode. Uh, as I said before, the stronger stocks tend to stay strong, the weaker stocks tend to stay weak. Uh, Williams used a zero to minus 100 scale. I think that one's a little bit hard to understand. So I use more of a grade school scale. I want stocks that are showing an A or an A plus in the top uh, few percent of their range where they're trending up and making higher highs. Um, see, most people assume a range is static. It's not. You know, the market is constantly changing. So our job is to really be flexible and change with it. And so a big part of what we do is look at these 80 and 20 levels, kind of like the Pareto's principle. You've heard of the 80-20 rule. 20% 20 of people controlled 80% of the wealth in Pareto's day. We know it's even more extreme now. You know, but that that's basic Pareto principle in action. You want to be in the best of the best on the upside. You want to be trading the worst of the worst, uh, you know, uh, downside laggards to the to the downside with puts. So the premise that I have is that these stocks can remain oversold and overbought for longer periods than the market expects. So you know when you look at even a, a fairly usually dull stock like GE and you say you know look at this when GE broke out on this chart as a prior example we'll show you a couple more fresh examples here but broke out and then closed above at the very next bar. You can see that's ahead of the acceleration bands. That's giving us the one and the two on the acceleration bands right here about three bars later. Part of what I'll tell people is you can put on part of your position into a percent R breakout, part of it on the acceleration bands confirmation. But you can see in this case how long this thing will stay overbought. But here too the traditional uh, percent R with the shorter settings would have actually stopped you out when this thing violated off of that low, but the, my person R said actually it used a little longer setting than the norm and it said this is a spot to tighten your stop. Guess what it also is, if you get a retest and you've missed a big trend in the first leg, what do you think a retest could also offer you? Not just a place to tighten the stop if you're in a position, what happens if you're out of a position? It could be a re-entry, that's right Mark, it could be a re-entry spot here and that's correct. And you can see that the next day it might even try to trade just a hair below. This is why we don't put in, uh, a, a stop on an, on an intraday trade underneath there because you don't want to get flushed and then see it reverse and then of course the next day after you're flushed it has a monster gap up. And again, on that gap, I would have booked partial profits. And you might have regretted it because you say you'd have the remaining half of your position goes a lot higher. You know what? I never regret taking a partial profit, trailing my stop, and making sure that I don't give back profits. You can see in this case when it finally does end is going to be off of this next retest. You could buy that one. And then you would have to stop it out on the next day's close underneath there. The beauty of that is that while you're going to lose on that next, that last trade on this example, you're not going to lose as much and you're not going to also lose much time. So if you're buying an option, 
and if and it violates, you say, look, I was wrong on that one. I was right on the other one. You lose small, you win bigger. That's the secret of trading success. You can see another pattern developing what I'm showing you here. I don't buy the very first breakout when it first goes over buy because that could just be the top of the trading range. I need to get proof that, uh, in my opinion, proof that we're getting a confirmation of that, and that will help filter out a lot of those bad, what I call fake out trades, and keep me on a lot of the true breakouts. So this two-step approach is the setup is when we first cross outside of there. The confirmation is when we then close above that initial overbought bars high or below that oversold bars low. So that setup is the is the first indication that the trend might be developing. But a lot of you, probably like I in my early days of trading, want to think, ooh, I want to get in and be ahead of the rest of the crowd. My experience is actually I want to get some further proof from the market or the stock that indeed it wants to validate what I'm seeing. So I don't mind leaving a candle or a bar of action on the table for that confirmation because in my experience it tests that that's a much more effective strategy. Um, so the, the whole idea is that these trends will display very similar characteristics. And so we're using that criteria to say, okay, how do we go and find those again and again and again? So part of what I want to show you in the retest concept, this was ICE, uh, the, now the parent company of the New York Stock Exchange, right? Uh, Inter International Continental, Continental Exchange, uh, start off with Energy uh, uh, Futures Exchange and, and grew quickly. And you can see in this chart, and again, you're staying away from all this chop zone here when, the, when there's nothing happening. I call this the no man's land. When that's stuck in a range, you see a couple times where it tries to go oversold. I'm not saying to sell it there. If it had broken that, I would say that would be a problem, but I'm saying, you know what, it's stuck in the mud until it proven otherwise. When this thing does break out here and then it closes above there, that's giving you the confirmation that that bar's closed and the next bar's open. But what I, my point on this one is, look at how many times you come in and get a retest. You get one there, you get two here. And, and again, remember, it's got to close underneath there. There's intraday trades underneath there, but not closes underneath there. You get a third one here right off that low. You get a, a fourth one a couple of days later. You know, so part of the objective here is you might have to buy an option and, and sit on it for a few days if you're looking at the daily chart or a few hours if you're looking at the hourly chart without it really rocking and rolling every time. But the idea is that if you get it at a good level, then you basically can afford to wait. Another lesson in this, if you're newer to options or you're thinking about which option you should be trading, is consider trading more of an in-the-money option that will help you to be able to be a little more stable. I'll show you what I mean by that in a second. So after about six or seven of those retests, I guess six on that one, the seventh one actually did violate. You can see here there would be on this dotted line example here would be right off of this low and it would take you out a couple days later. But it also gets you right back in. You're back in for another retest and catching another trade up. If we're in between the acceleration bands, I use that acceleration band upper band is a target. So you're hitting into those upper targets, you should say, thank you very much, Mr. Market. I'm going to take some money off the table into those kind of target levels. Okay? So that's a big part of it, too. On the downside, family dollar, which we affectionately call FIDO. Um, basically, uh, FDO, we, we saw the breakdown in which uh, you saw it, uh, you know, really starting to move down here and then right off of this low, actually, if I can draw a straight line, and then confirming here. Now, you see, this case, it's not right at uh, a breakdown of the acceleration band. So if it's right on the acceleration band, there should be some support. I'm probably going to wait on this one until I get either a break of the acceleration bands or, even better, a retest. So when you see the retest coming in off of this kind of quick pop back up after the acceleration bands break, there's a great low-risk entry right there to either add to a position you might have already put on or to start a position, either way. And you can see then it just keeps on grinding lower. Again, when you get a windfall gap like this one here, good idea to book half of your profits that you have remaining, half your position. And then basically, it, this one had a really violent when it finally did turn back up because it had been such a long downtrend. When it turned back up, by the time you got a violation, it was all the way back up here on the second piece. So that's why taking half off can be a good idea because even though that was not a great exit, it was saying, you know, now we're back in the range. I want to move on to other opportunities until we come back to a new fresh breakdown, which happens here. You can see this one, the percent R gets you in just a little before the one and the two of the acceleration bands, but both of them still had lots of meat on the bone for trading it to the downside for the next several weeks. Uh, and like I said, so to get, you know, kind of, 
my full course would be a lot more, but what I'm doing is I'm breaking out these three indicators. I'm going to show you the CCI in a minute too. Uh, I call it my top three indicators, percent R with the acceleration bands and the CCI commodity channel index. These three have guided me to so many of these big trends in stocks and particularly in options. You can also use it in Forex and futures. And it's just about finding the time if you want to catch a meaningful move, finding where the right setups are to catch that and leaving a lot of the other bar by bar noise alone. There's a lot of times where I don't trade until I see one of these setups. So literally, I'm just sitting there watching and waiting. And that's hard for you as traders to think, well, I'm, tra I'm a trader. I should be trading. Well, not necessarily. You're a trader. The first thing you should be do is, is be a really good observer with really good pattern uh, analysis and know you've got a, a, a profitable edge in your system. And then when, when, when you literally get a, hey, you need to buy right now kind of signal, then you start putting it to work. You don't, you don't try to get in ahead of that. So this is what we call uh, the bigtrends.com slash top three boot camp. And, uh, and I will um, come back and talk a little bit about CCI because I want to make sure you get a flavor of that. And then I'll put that link up here in a minute. But basically, I scan these systems along with my fellow researchers looking through these opportunities. And, and we, we send out a lot of real-time alerts to different uh, types of option traders, whether you buy options, if you do credit spreads, if you do debit spreads, if you, if you want uh, trading room type of training. We do all of that. But basically, you know, a big part of this process for me is going through and looking for, you know, the best of the best type of opportunities. And so, you know, when we're going through this and we're looking for these type of trades, uh, you know, we want to say, okay, you know, how do we go and find that next great trade? And so we'll go through and we'll actually scan through uh, about a couple hundred stocks and we'll literally look for, you know, where can, where, where's it telling us that we've got an opportunity to really, um, you know, find the best of the best situations. And this is part of our Big Trends Toolkit where we'll literally go in and show you, okay, you know, when you sort out all those different names, uh, what's giving us uh, a best of the best opportunities. Let me show you that real quick. And then I'm going to show you the CCI as an example of that. Here I'm pulling up my scanner, my scanner right now. Um, but, um, you know, the idea of this is that you want to focus yourself on just the best of the best. You don't want to mess with the middling kind of situations. And so, yeah, Tim, you can use them on futures markets as well. You need to go ahead and test it through and make sure for whatever type of a, of a market you're trading that, that whatever strategy you're going to use works. And the beauty of uh, TradeStation, again, you can do this on a lot of different platforms, is you've got the ability to use that analyzer tool and put it to work for you here. So, you know, for example, you know, if I'm looking just at, the, for starters, the daily chart, and I'm looking at percent R, these are not recommendations. It's just kind of how I go through and I scan the markets. I can tell you the finishing the day, obviously Nike had the big earnings gap up. We've been bullish on Nike and Under Armour um, for quite a while this year. But bottom line is that the, those readings in the 90s mean it's in the top few percent of its potential percent of our readings. So Nike's been strong, you can see, for multiple days. So, you know, if you went and looked at Nike just for starters, you say, well, you know, was Nike, were we, were we late on Nike or were we not? No, Nike was giving you a breakout. Uh, back here about a week and a half ago on the daily chart. You can see, of course, sure, some of the short-term intraday charts, stock have been choppy for a few days. But seeing that kind of pattern where it's breaking out right in front of that uh, earnings is really what you like to see. You like to see that you're getting that kind of strength. You go back and look over time, Nike was breaking out in June right before that gap up on earnings about a week before as well. Oh, by the way, it also had a retest right there before. This one looks like it would have been probably close intraday to a retest. It was down more than a point uh, on Thursday below where it closed. So that could have been retesting if you're paying close attention intraday. We call that a phantom retest. We also see the CCI. The CCI is a commodity channel index. This was developed by a futures trader, uh, Donald Lambert, back in the early 80s. And But bottom line is that you can see same principles as percent R. When it goes over bot and follows through, this becomes a nice filter for me to say, yeah, we're getting some confirmation of that move. So, you know, Nike uh, was starting to show that, but bottom line is that I mentioned an option charts. An option chart means, okay, I, I usually won't trade a stock right in front of earnings because I think it's, it's a lot riskier of an approach. But basically, you know, if you were just looking at Nike's option chart, let's just look at it for a second. Stock closed about 115, so I, I'm not saying I would trade this option. I'm just saying I like to look at how the options are setting up in front of the news. This option wasn't really setting up, I got to admit, it, the CCI was not quite above that 
plus 100 over bot level. Compare that to, now it's confirmed, well, it's setting up actually above there now. If it had a close over that high of 11.49, uh, at the start of this week, uh, uh, Monday close or Tuesday close, that would be a confirmation that Nike can go still further. Because you go back and you look at what happened back in June, uh, and then of course the earnings breakout right there, and then it followed through, and then you got a nice steady trend. That option went from a couple bucks up to about five bucks. Five forty was a high. Uh, our our rule of thumb would be, you know, while we're staying in the CCI above that plus a hundred threshold, our rule would be that we want to make sure that uh, we're looking for, if you get a chance to get a double on any option, you should always sell half of that position out if you can get a double and try to ride the rest. At that point, it's what we call a free trade. There's just a lot of opportunity there. Okay, um, I'm, I've only got a couple more minutes here, but basically, and we can you know, go back through these scans again and say, okay, you, know, you can do this yourself and you can certainly put a lot of stuff to work. I can't go through individual stocks here. We do it in our trading room. Uh, but it's getting some requests here, but you know, basically, look at a name like Yahoo. Um, with these green ones, mean that it's giving us bare confirmations. DGX, BHP. You know, so you know, uh, you know, these kind of names. Uh, Caterpillar was already on the list. You know, but basically, you look for um, even some names that have been, you know, Hewlett Packard, Amgen, just starting to break down a little bit. Some of the biotechs there. You know, so you look at a lot of these names. GoPro is one we've been bearish on for a while here. So literally, you can go in here and look at any of these. You know, we, so GoPro, look at it. You can see, you know, yes, it was a wonderful one for us on the way up, even though it didn't have enough data based on our filters. But you can see, look at the first big percent our breakout after the IPO and the one retest and the stock launch got one more retest, another test of the highs, then it started to break. Okay, now you look at it on the other side when it broke down. That followed through, and you can see in this case uh, uh, that then it, it gave another retest right off of that point, right off that high of 51.32. While it tried to trade above it right off of the open the next morning, it didn't close above it. You stay with the trade. Got one more retest. If you missed the first train leaving the station, you got a second chance, and then it flipped to the downside. So again, you know these are not, and, and like I said, for swing traders. You could have been in and out of GoPro multiple times for that. The big move on the swing trade time frame was back here at the start of September. Broke down, had a retest right there at the end of the day on the first. Remember, that was a pretty rough day for the market. But there's your low risk entry the first time. There's your second low risk entry. This next one, you see, uh, it's not going to do much, and then it's going to it's going to flip on you. So basically, this third one, what you would have made money twice on those retests. The third one, you would have lost a little bit. You know, so that's that's to be expected. That's just part of trading. Right now, GoPro in kind of what we call a no man's land. And oh, by the way, we would not have taken that buy signal because the longer term chart is bearish. So you want to line up your time frames across these various spots here. And again, I, I'm apologizing because I'm out of time, but I know that we've got other great speakers coming in and I want to give them room too. But what I want to do is I want to post here on the uh, chat box for everybody's benefit. I'm going to post it here. Uh, this uh, link. It's www.bigtrends.com and I want to show you that page real quick and then here I'll give it back to you in about 90 seconds. Uh, basically the idea here that um, you know when you go to that that link at the bottom of the page there or now on your chat box bigtrends.com slash top three boot camp. What you'll see is it'll take you to this page here which is basically a special training session I did for my Big Trends uh, Boot Camp uh, followers, where I went through between an hour and an hour and a half of each. So percent R and the acceleration bands, I think, were each about an hour and a half, and the CCI was uh, was that confirming tool a little more than an hour. So we're talking about more than four hours of content here, and basically, usually we would sell it for uh, 100 bucks a piece out of each of those sessions, or 290. Seven, but basically you can get all three together here today as my thanks to Trade Thirsty and, and uh, way to get you started thinking about how to take advantage of the next big trends for just 99 bucks. So that gives you lifetime access, high definition quality, on-demand videos. You can watch them as many times as you want with no restriction. My only requirement is that you only use it for your and your family's benefit. You're not to share the link with anybody else or your access with anybody else. Okay, so basically you and your family get the benefit of this kind of Basically, it's taken me 25 years to refine and hone these principles of finding the best of the best 
methods out there in the markets for bull and bear trends. Uh, so bottom line is that we walk you through all the percent R rules, the acceleration man rules, the commodity channel index rules, all the settings of what tests the best uh, from all my extensive decades worth of data testing over thousands of different stocks and situations. So the bottom line is that all you do when you're ready to go, you go to that link, you hit the add to cart button and it'll just walk you through. Um, and, and you can also see in those tabs that we also give you the opportunity to upgrade to add the other um, indicator boot camps, it ends up being a total of 10 sessions for 199 if you want to upgrade, if you just want to start with the three for the 99, that's fine too. Uh, but basically those little tabs uh, on that order page show you what's in all the other content. You just hit that checkout button in green there and then you just go and get your key information filled in in bold, whichever credit card you want to use or PayPal and then basically uh, you can just say you saw it with me here or with the webinar link either way and uh, and then terms and conditions are spelled out in full about you know all of our big trends education and how that works and then once you're ready to go you just click on the checkbox and hit the submit order you'll be good to go so you know just if you have any questions too on that page uh, you'll notice that uh, you can uh, contact us in the top right through our toll-free 800 line which is easy to remember it's just 1-800 big trends so on your phone just remember 800 big trends or you can also email us client care at bigtrends.com uh, so um, we're getting a couple questions Hubert I don't know if we have time for questions or if we need to wrap it up didn't hear Hubert so let me just see the coupon has already been applied there Mark so basically it's all it's all squared away you, you're saving 200 of the normal 299 so basically you're only paying 99 bucks here today um, you can use these indicators on any platform where you can actually either see that they're already there or if you can do any kind of custom coding uh, we can help you with that but if it's a if it's a fixed platform we can't do anything about that uh, but it's available on a lot of platforms um, Let's see. Um, appreciate the kind words, Robert. Glad you enjoyed it. Um, and I know Hubert is recording everything for everybody, so definitely um, take advantage of that. Um, yes, Thinkorswim is one that it is available on, along with uh, a lot of the other platforms. You know, Options House has it as well. You know, so you basically would see if you went into like the Options House platform, you went into Chart. You know, you'd see it there too. So you basically will see a lot of these type of uh, indicators like acceleration bands percent R and more on a lot of the platforms out there okay um, should be on E-Trade as well guy I haven't looked at E-Trade in a while but it should be but basically we don't give the indicators part of this this is the training but basically uh, you can see that you are learn this stuff if you want to get all of our big trends toolkit indicators you certainly can hey there Hubert hey, Price. oh hey Jeanette hey, how sorry. are you I, I'm, having, I'm in like tech H E double hockey sticks today. <laughs> anyway, so I'm um, trying to say that as sweet as I can. Yeah, I've been trying to tell you it's okay. You can go a couple more minutes if you want, or if you want to wrap oh, cool. it up because we like we you had to start late because of me. So anyway, no do your th here's on tap. You do whatever you need to do. We're right here. We're ready whenever you are. I appreciate. It. I'll just wrap up a couple more questions. Diane okay. asks, "Does Options Express have the indicators?" Yes, Options Express does. Diane, so that's another one you can use it on, and you can use it on a lot of these, or we can help you through it. The big part of, uh, you know, what we just show you, because uh, I was kind of rushing through that, how you get signed up stuff, because I know kind of tight on, we're all tight on time here, but but basically a big part of this I did mention is you also get unlimited email access. If you've got questions about the material we stand ready to answer any question. We don't give personalized recommendations. If you say, should I buy IBM or not? We won't say that, but we say, are you reading the chart correctly to uh, the, the IBM has a, a percent R buy signal? Yes, it has a percent R buy signal. What you choose to do with that, of course, is your choice. But you know, just to make sure you're reading the chart correctly, we stand by to help you to answer. You know, that you are understanding the the lessons off the indicators. Just quickly, if you hit these tabs down below, I uh, mentioned the other couple of courses. We go through additional directional movement indicator and average directional movement, which is a great trend confirmation tool. A tool I developed called DMI Difference and a a tool called efficiency ratio that I saw a guy named Perry Kaufman talking about the concept of trend efficiency and I created a indicator around that uh, to do that and then the last three actually walks you through some other unique tools including a different way to look at MACD uh, percent above moving average has helped me find some of the biggest and best trends 
uh, of of my trading career. It's a really a it's a very rare thing when it happens, but it's really a great when the right filter happens. It really can be a very powerful tool. And then market timing, of course, is critical. Talking about the VIX and put call ratios, and then we even had a bonus session putting all this together because I know it's a lot when you're starting to assimilate multiple indicators or ideas and saying what's the best of the best combinations here. Um, um, so the upgrade there, yeah, uh, uh, David said, can you discuss the upgrade? Yeah, when you hit the add to cart, I've already got it in there once, so I'll hit an extra, remove it once. All you do is when you go from the three indicators, which are already marked down, uh, no coupon codes required, we've done it for you. It would usually be, like we said, uh, a few hundred bucks. We've marked it down to 99 bucks. But if you want to add the other two boot camps, which would each be a few hundred bucks a piece too. So when you add all of those 10 sessions, you just hit that other dot there. It takes it from 99 to 199. That would usually cost you almost 900 bucks. So you know both of them are great values. That's your best value with the entire 10 sessions. But you know, and again, this is basically me assimilating 25 years of my knowledge. What's worked for me? Uh, it's what helped me launch big trends. I've helped a lot of other traders launch their trading careers, uh, and basically continuing education is important too. So a lot of people will stay in touch with us about the next innovation, the next breakthrough as well. But this is going to get you really jump started on that process. So you just go to that link. I'll post it one more time here. It's bigtrends.com. Where was it here? Bigtrends.com slash top three uh, boot camp. And uh, so uh, basically check it out, and then I will hand it back over to Jeanette so she can get ready to introduce our next speaker here.